Chapter Eight of Molly of the Movies by Kenneth McGaffey. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Last Reel. Hollywood, November four. My God, Clarabelle, I am about to become a bride. I make haste to dash this news off to you, so when you see my wedding announcement, you will not be nonplussed. Before long, unless there is a breakdown somewhere, I will be Mrs. Cuthbert Clemenceau Pontiff. When dear Cuthbert got himself nerved up enough to breathe the fatal words, I leaped into his waiting arms like a tiger upon a defenseless goat, and as I nestled my head into his waiting bosom, and darn near broke his specks, we blighted our troth. Whatever that is. I knew that Cuthbert was a-going for to ask me to commit matrimony, and coy and maiden-like I did not give him a chance to duck. It was all so rheumatic it seems like a five-reel Mary Pickford. I know you will like Cuthbert, if I ever bring him back to Grundy Center. He is not what you would call handsome, but he has such noble thoughts. Beautiful eyes, my dear, beautiful. Of course some may say he squints a little, but you would never notice it when his head is turned the other way. His teeth, Clarabelle, are the most prominent thing about him. In fact, it was his teeth I noticed first. They sort of stick out, like a couple of tombstones on a dark night, and the cutest Adam's apple. Honest, sometimes you think it is going to jump up and knock his hat off. During our courtship, he treated me like a princess of royal blood. When we were whining and dining at the cafeteria, he always saw that I had plenty of mashed potatoes, and lots of times I have had six glasses of water, without him saying a word. And toothpicks. Would you believe it, Clarabelle? I have enough toothpicks for my trousseau right now. Liberal with his money, too. Almost every time we go sightseeing in the electric, he pays both fares. He has told me often that he had just as soon spend a nickel as go through a San Francisco earthquake any time. Cuthbert says I am going to be such a help to him when we are wed. Even now he lets me stick the stamps on the envelopes that are to carry his deathless words to the great magazines, and then when they come back, he lets me look, to see if there are any the post office people fail to mark. Of course, Cuthbert don't make much money. He says geniuses never do, until after they are dead. But he is going to have me retire from the stage and get a regular job. Something that will not interfere with my home life. Taking and washing, for example. Cuthbert says he has written a number of articles, proving that a woman's place is in the home, and he is sure he can get enough for me to do to keep me there. We are going to have the wedding solemnized as soon as he can find justice of the peace that ain't all corruption and greed, and is willing to send two loving hearts, hand in hand, down the paths of life just for the experience. Cuthbert says it would spoil his whole married life if he had to pay for a wedding. I have played in my last picture, and I heard it rumored that all the directors are going to get together and send me a vote of thanks. Ain't that just too sweet for words? Everybody seems glad to hear that I'm going to get married. They tell me a lot of these female stars are biting their fingernails down to the quick and jealous rage. Must close now, as I have to meet Cuthbert. Already he is training me in the housewifely arts by rehearsing me darning the holes in his socks. Lovingly, Molly. Hollywood, November 15. Dear Clarabelle, Our wedding has been consummated and I am now a honest-to-goodness wife. We have the cunningest little home, two rooms and a fire escape, and when the curtains are up in the windows of the next flat, we can see right through out into the street. Our wedding was delayed a little, on account of the fact that Cuthbert could not find a justice of the peace that wanted to give a marriage ceremony just for the exercise, and we had to hang around a couple of days, getting a crowd of brides and grooms together so we could get an excursion rate. Cuthbert is now busy getting out a very bitter article, on the corruption and greed of political grafters. After we were wed, we went on a bridal tour at the Catalinian Islands, which lay in the ocean near here, all surrounded by water. It is a beautiful trip, but rough, and at times I wish that Cuthbert and I had never met. But it was lovely after we got over there. You have to go by boat. We came back the same day, and then the next day we hunted our little nest. I just love the little place. It is so cute, and especially nice when the people downstairs ain't cooking onions. Right away, the day after we were wed, I got a job. I met a director I worked for once, and after I told him I was a war bride, and he said he would get me a job assisting the hash director in the cafeteria, out to the studio. It is real lovely, and I get a chance to study the mode of eating of the famous stars that work there. Cuthbert says he thinks he will get some kind of a drug habit and be a scenario writer. He says you gotta smoke or sniff something to be a good scenario writer to help you get the ideas. I'll bet he could write good ones too if he could only think of them. Wouldn't it be lovely if he was a scenario writer and got a job out here and we could work side by side, he dealing out junk for the director and me a dealing out beans for the actors? Well, 
I must quit now, for Cuthbert will be waiting to see if I got any tips today. I don't know when I'll have a chance to write again. Love, Mrs. Cuthbert Clemsa Pontief. Knee, Molly. P.S. Knee is French for once was. End of chapter 8 End of Molly of the Movies by Kenneth McGaffey